Hello, world. How y'all doing? Cam Kimbro. Welcome to my channel. Hi, 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 everyone. How you doing out there in internet land and whatnot and stuff? I know the world has gone mad right now. We've all been through a whole lot lately. <clears throat> Trust me, uh, we probably don't have the same exact problems, but I can relate to what you're talking about. But that's neither here or there. So today what I'm doing is making a little video to explain a little bit about who I am. Who am I? Who is Cam Kimbro? So I'm going to try to fit this in a little short segment. It's less than 10 minutes or something like that. It's a whole lot to the story. Um, <clears throat> so if you can't really understand what I'm saying, hopefully you'll watch it again. Or you'll write a comment because I'll respond back. And if you don't care, I really hope you don't waste your time watching the video that you're not really interested in. So who is Cam Kimbro? So Cam Kimbrough is a young man from the state of Mississippi. I was born in a little small town in Mississippi and my mom was a daughter to my uh, grandmother, Miss Bertie Mae Jones, Miss Bertie Mae Balfour Jones. And so, uh, you know, we were brought up in a church. She was brought up in a church. My grandmother also had two other um, children, which were my two uncles. Mr. Durrell and Mr. Nevis Oglesby. And so, you know, that's my family on my mom's side, as well as a whole lot of other people um, who were born in and around Potts Camp area, New Albany area, and the Tupelo, Mississippi area. I mean, I could go on and on about the whole family. But that's my mom's side of the family. So I was the only child that she had. And um, I was fathered by Mr. Kenny Malone Kimbrough. Uh, at this at this time in my life. I think uh had to be, well, I, I don't have to think. I was conceived in the 80s, so it was around the 80s, you know, so I, I say from like the 1970s to the 1980s, uh, you know, it was the beginning of the matter that you see on your screen. And so my dad and my mom were a couple, you know, it was back, back in the day when my grandfather had a juke joint um, in the Chulahoma area. Tulahoma, Mississippi, Holly Springs, Mississippi area. And uh, as I was told, you know, they loved each other, you know, that young love. And uh, my mom used to sit on my dad's lap when they was in a juke joint, you know, when he was playing drums and whatnot. So everything is like a lot of, it's a lot of fuzziness going on. I'm sure there's some details and stuff that I might be leaving out. But uh, so that's how I was conceived. That's how I came to be a part of the Kimbo family. My mom, Miss Joyce, Coretta Jones, better known as Joyce Shewolf Jones, and my father, Ken Malone Kimbro, who was the drummer for his father, Mr. Junior Kimbro. So moving right along, me being the only child, I was in and around the juke joint, but it was at a very early age, you know, so early, there's a lot of things that I um, don't remember or I can't remember right now at the time. Uh, somebody's calling me, hold on y'all. Doing my little video, I'm not even gonna edit that out. But anyway, what I was saying, and so there are some things that I do remember, but I had to be about, oh, I wanna say maybe like four or five years old, something like that, maybe like six or seven. I don't know, time is like now, so I really don't really remember the specifics, but that's neither here or there either. Um, I just thought that I would tell you guys because some of you may be interested as to how I'm kin to Mr. Junior Kimbo. Uh, so from that being said, there was a point in my life where I was a young man and, uh, you know, there were other er other things that I wanted to do. You know, my dad was actually telling me around the time that I know I remember I was like 10 and 11, son, you need to learn how to play blues, you know, but at that time, you know, I'm living in this little small town, which is um, close to Oxford, Mississippi, which is um, 
where uh, Oxford Ole Miss is. And so it's a lot of different varieties of music, you know, plus I listen, you know, who don't listen to rap music at the time. So it was like Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Mr. Biggs, like Tom Ski Mask, all of the Memphis artists or whatever, because I'm like not too far from Memphis growing up. And then I'm listening to like things like System of a Down and, and this band I had heard of in a long time named Seven Dust and Incubus, a, a, a Perfect Circle, uh, Nirvana. I mean, it was a whole lot of things that I was listening to, but I wasn't definitely listening to bluegrass. I wasn't listening to country music and I wasn't listening to blues. I wasn't listening to folk music. You know, I wasn't listening to anything like that because that wasn't the era that I had grew up in. And that wasn't what I was interested in um, necessarily listening to at the moment. It don't mean nothing, though. It was just, you know, I was a kid. And so I really wasn't connecting with blues music at that time. Although I heard it all in the house, Saturday morning blues with Mr. Kojak, you know what I'm saying, on 92, 92.5, 92.7. Uh, you know, so I'm just like, everybody and I heard the blues, but as far as like playing, you know, it's other people too that like kind of grew up in the church um, that I knew about. This dude named Junior in New Albany, you know, he's a producer and he, he, uh, he plays a guitar. You know, they was brought up in the church and stuff, so he ain't had no other choice. You know, they playing guitar licks and everything. You know, that's that's his whole family. So that's what they was doing. But at the time, long story short, that's not what I was doing. What I was doing was getting up, cleaning my room. <laughs> I was washing dishes and I was cleaning the house because, you know what I'm saying, that's how it was with my mama. That's what you had to do. That was the thing. That's what you were supposed to be doing. And so that was my life. You know, a very, um, I, don't, I don't really want to say militant, a very disciplined <clears throat> life, um, routine, you know, getting up doing this, doing that, making sure I made it to school on time. And I was also an athlete, so I was a basketball player. I was a 1A state champion, um, track track star. I say star, it sounds better. That's what I was. I was a star. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Green. But for real, though, um, you know, so I ventured off, and I didn't really magnify on my musical family heritage at that time. And later on, we were rushed it up. I sped through stuff. Um my first college, you know, well, I've gone to like four colleges, um, yay school, right? But uh, I didn't really graduate and I didn't flunk out of anything. I just have college credits because when I got to college, I really couldn't decide what I really wanted to do. And so really I did learn a lot of things though. I mean, like from basic prerequisites and just, you know, just classes. Because when I first went, it was for like nursing, just kind of doing like what my mom thought it would be a good idea to do, whatever. I know, right? Nursing, right? Right. But it was like money. And that's what it was about. You know, everybody wants money because the idea of money is you gain things like power and status and stuff that people um, <clears throat> um, may consider important or whatever. Uh, and so that's that was a mindset at the time. I wasn't really trying to do anything other than get to the money. Uh, so I was always working. You know what I mean? I've worked in a lot of different places. My first job, I was 11 years old. I know for sure I worked at Mr. Dunning's Corner Store. And at the town I was from, I was sweeping a lot and bagging ice for like $25 a week. And I was getting that Monday. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's the type of life um, that I was living, long story short, not to take away really all my minutes and memory and gigabytes. But so that's who I was at that time, you know. And I went from there to um, from college to working at this place, Ashley Furniture Factory. I really don't want to leave out all the places I work because I want people to know that I be working and stuff. I say I be working. I know it's not correct grammar or whatever, but it's more of an impact when I say I be working. And it's like from Pizza Hut, Sunny. Uh, I can't really think of the name of the breakfast spot name. I hop. You, you get the idea. Places like that. Um, Ashley Furniture. I think I already said that. Uh, I've done like carpentry work for this... this um, guy that I know and man it's like when you're really recording you hit the record button your brain just you can't really remember uh I've been a fireman uh I've been a CNA I've been a counselor's assistant and so oh, oh truck driver I probably already said that already so I did that for like 10 years and then I was also a truck driver instructor and um throughout all of that time I really got into a lot of things I drove 18 wheelers I drove box trucks I drove armored armor, armor money trucks. Um, so I was already in the guns, right? I'm going to stop and talk about this because people be thinking hey, about gunplay and stuff like that. I guess because I got a friendly face or just all of us are kind of judgmental. Uh, so I really got into guns. So I really like guns a whole lot. And especially because I'm American. And uh, so, 
you know, I've done I've done all of these things, you know, chasing dreams, trying to chase satisfaction and happiness. And uh, so it's led me to where I am today in which it was a moment where I was actually homeless and it wasn't because of nothing really serious or whatever, no juicy stuff. I ain't really trying to expose myself too much. But throughout that time is when I really started gravitating towards the blues because I actually had the blues. And so that's what I was going to tell you. I was about 24, 25. I was driving trucks and the company that I was working for had did something illegal and it caused people in certain classes to lose their CDLs. And so I didn't even know how to play the guitar really at that time. And so I bought one from this pawn shop. I know I probably shouldn't have bought one, but I did whatever I could and saved up the money. And it was this dude named Eddie Long. It was this um, pawn shop or guitar shop in Holly Springs at the time. It was back in the early 2000s. Eddie Long. Anyway, he was a cool dude. He was a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Very motivational guy. Um, you know, bought the guitar from him. And I spent countless hours every day, like three hours a day. And that was around the time that I became a fireman, too, because uh, I seen an ad in the paper, you know, that was that was about to get ready to hire some firemen. And so I did a lot of research and found out you had to pass this CPAT test. I mean, I ain't had nothing but time. So all I did was work out and ride. This only means of um, transportation I had at the time was a bicycle because the vehicle I had at the time, of course, it got taken because I wasn't able to pay for it. So I paid my dues. In other words, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and, you know, stuff like that. So that's a little piece of things that I'm into. Um because I got jumped this one time when I was a little bitty dude because I was trash talking because I was winning in the game of 21. I mean, I had all rights to I was uh, I was on it, uh, uh, you know. And uh, so these two dudes, like, jumped me or whatever. So I vowed to myself, that'll never happen again. I really didn't know what to do in a scenario like that. You know, I was like nine or something like that. You get hit with, like, two people coming at you, bye-bye, while your adrenaline rushing because you just got through uh, LeBron James and them or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Bam, bam. And they were standing there looking crazy. Kyrie. And so they didn't know what to do with themselves. And so they bow, they start bow, bow, jumping on me. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I really got into fighting around that time. So I really love uh, mixed martial arts. I really love to box. Of course, that's the all time standard favorite. <clears throat> then you got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, Cause I love the fact that there's so much discipline in Jiu Jitsu. And the fact that when you fighting, your fight or flight is like, <laughs> right? Your adrenaline is so high, but like, because of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I learned to kind of, you know, the quiet in the storm and not before or after the storm type deal. And it's just um, the discipline that's involved in the ju Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is just amazing, period. And I try to take that and apply that along with all areas and aspects of my life, which, I mean, anyway, I don't want to get to preaching about that. Um, and Muay Thai. So I love Muay Thai simply because it's just like, I don't know, I felt stupid. It was like a, a light bulb, like, ding dong, you do have elbows and shoulders and everything that you could be... Doing, you know stuff with and so it's great and um yeah like i was saying army money trucks you know i did that and so that's how i got into weaponry plus i'm a country boy i go hunting and fishing and kill deers and rabbits and stuff like that but i don't do it just for the fun of it I, you know i used to eat them i used to it's back when my stepfather was alive r.i.p Wendell. but uh so that's just a little bit about myself man you know i've traveled the united states in a uh, in a big rig i got my cdl's as soon as I hit 21, I was working in the furniture factory. I got tired of that work. That's like really robot slave type work. Then you ain't got but 15 minutes. I found myself running to the break room for a moment of relief that I never got because I had to stand in the line to get something that I end up not enjoying later. But, um, and so long story short, man, you know, I honed in on the craft, the family and the culture and the heritage and, you know, wanted to learn more about who I am as a person and how I got here and, who were the people who created me on um, what were they about and, you know, what motivated them to do what they did. And, you know, a lot of that led to my grandfather because music is all in my family. You know, my mom was a singer. She even got a scholarship to go to college to do so, um, you know, but ended up having to um, withdraw from college because I was conceived, you know, I was born. And then on my father's side of the family, like, you know, his dad was a musician who taught himself and, you know, and he, my dad fell off into that. And so my whole life is music. You know, it's like I had no choice <laughs> to play music. And it's crazy because at one point my my whole life, I, I didn't want, it's like I wanted to do it, but I just wanted to keep it to myself because I'm like, I'm an introvert or whatever. And, that, and that's something I had to learn how to deal with. We so powerful, like as people, 
But anyway, not getting off the topic of the subject because the energy is like, woo, 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 woo. Because I'm already looking at the camera. It's like 14 minutes and something. And I know I was trying to keep it short and sweet, but it's a whole lot to me. I hadn't even really started touching on stuff. And I'm trying to leave certain stuff out so I can save some time. But I get to talking and I get to rambling and stuff like that. But anyway, that's who I am. Like, uh, not really that ain't who I am. I can't really sum up who I am in 15 minutes. But that's some about, that's some of who I am. And now that uh, I have this YouTube channel and now I've been around certain people and I realize that my existence is not to keep to myself as bad as I want to keep to myself. And because I feel like it's more comfortable and stuff like that. But in the long run, my own personal judgment, that's not me even being a man. If I can't deal with society, if I want to just stay locked up all of the time, because then I won't even really know what I'm made of or what my tolerance levels are or how patient I am with somebody trying to humiliate me or disrespect me or whatever, you know, I shouldn't even really, I should be able to like hold my own, you know? So anyway, long story short, that's why I'm out here on this internet being vulnerable for those who might be shy and might not want to talk or whatever, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's something that I'm saying, maybe I can connect with you. I don't even know. Hopefully it is happening, but if it's not happening, then I'm just really trying to utilize my existence in some form of fashion and hoping that it does something for somebody because um, that's what I do. You know, I ingest certain things from people that I feel like are inspirational, motivational, and positive people. But anyway, long story short, y'all, I got to cut this video short because I'm actually trying to make some money. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't even be doing it right now, but this is what was on my mind. And so listening to other people and stuff on YouTube, you got to just press record. And that's what I did. And uh, that's that. And so we'll holler to the next episode. Oh, I don't know how I left this out. Like, I love to take pictures and make videos. Like, I had to put that in there. <laughs> All right, deuces.